What's up everyone, Takedown here. Welcome back to another video. As you guys know, I'm a huge fan of the WWE and I also like sharing my collections here on my channel. So today I decided I'm gonna be sharing with you my WWE video game collection. In my collection, I have the past 15 years of WWE video games and also a few others to share. So let's get right into it. Okay, so up first, I'm going to start off with the ones that are not part of my 15 years of collecting video games. So up first is SmackDown Shut Your Mouth. So in my opinion, this is the oldest WWE game that I have in my collection that I remember playing at least. And this one here was a lot of fun. It was basically like an open world wrestling game. You could fight anywhere in the arena, whole bunch of rooms. It was a lot of fun. You could even leave the arena and go into the subway to fight. Another thing that I thought was cool for career mode, which you could still go throughout the arena and do your own thing, but you could also draft your own rosters and see who is going to be on your roster. So the fact that they had that in the game was a lot of fun. It was very unique and I definitely remember playing this game. Next up is the only game in this collection that is not actually a WWE game and that is TNA Impact. So this game I believe came out in 2008 or 2009 and for that year, in my opinion, it was the best year for TNA roster wise. So you had people like Kurt Angle, Sting, AJ Styles, Booker T, Samoa Joe, Kevin Nash, Christian, and so many more. I'm not going to remember them all. The greatest thing about this game was Suicide. So Suicide was originally a character that you played in career mode for this game. And because of the success of the character for this game, they actually turned him into a real life wrestler in TNA, which was a lot of fun. So the fact that they had a character from the video game that was so successful and everybody loved, they actually brought him to TNA TV for the actual TNA wrestling. So it was very unique. This year is also the first year for the Ultimate X mode, which in my opinion is the best mode ever that I ever remember playing. It's a very unique match and it was a lot of fun. Next up is the start of my 15 years of collecting the video games. So up first is SmackDown vs. Raw. So this game here had a lot of legends in it. I think this is the first year they started to actually add legends in the video game. They started to let you create your own championships and pay-per-views, but this game didn't really have a lot going for it yet. Next up is SmackDown vs. Raw 2006. Now this year, I don't think it had GM mode, but it did have career mode, and career mode for this year was so much more advanced. You couldn't go throughout the arena like you could in previous games, but it had a lot more cutscenes, a lot more of cinematic parts in it, and it was a lot of fun. It was also the first year for the Buried Alive match. They had a lot more of the newer roster. Of course, they update the roster every year, but this game's career mode was by far the best mode. Again, GM mode wasn't a part of this year yet, but still, career mode was fantastic. Next up is SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. Now, this is the first year that they put GM mode in the game. Now, GM mode for me, when it comes to WWE video games, was the best mode, and it's the mode that I played the most. So, the reason for that is because I think it's just more like I like controlling my own roster. I like to choose which wrestlers I have my roster, who's getting paid what, who my champions are going to be, what matches I'm going to do, and stuff like that. I basically like being in control, and in GM mode, you can do that. So this year also had a fantastic career mode, and had a lot going for it, and it was a lot of fun. Next up is the video game that I believe I played the most, and it is SmackDown vs. Raw 2008. It's the first year that had ECW in the video game. It was a lot of fun. Like I said, it's SmackDown vs. Raw 2008, but I think I continued to play it until I got my PlayStation 3, which was... 2011 or 2012. So I've played this game a lot, many years. I still started collecting the video games every year, but I always went back to this game. This game's GM mode was very unique because it had the three rosters and it was a lot of fun. I definitely spent more time playing this game than any other WWE game. Next up is SmackDown vs. Raw 2009. Now, I actually didn't have this originally on the PlayStation 2. I just got the PlayStation 2 version, I think last year. I got it off of eBay for $10 because at the time that this game came out, I was hugely invested in Nintendo DS, so I got the game on the Nintendo. Now, I did hear a lot of people say the PlayStation version was a lot better. The DS version was still unique on its own, but this version was a lot better. So I have not played this yet because I don't have my PlayStation 2 anymore, but I plan on getting one very soon to check it out. I think this was the last year that GM mode was in the game. It had a pretty unique career mode as well, but I have yet to play it. But next up is SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. Now this year, you could basically create your own superstar and do your career mode that way, which I think you could do in previous games, but they pushed it so much more in this game. I think this year too, again, it had ECW, but it didn't have a lot going for it in my opinion. I don't think they had... 
uh, universe mode yet. They took out GM mode, so you couldn't really have any control with the rosters or anything like that. It did have a great storyline for your career mode, but basically that's all it had going for it. Next up is SmackDown vs. Raw 2011. Now this game here, I'm going to say is the worst game that I've played with WWE. In my opinion, it is basically like SmackDown vs. Raw 2010 with a new cover on it, updated roster, and that's about it. It didn't have much going for it. It did have the universe mode in it, but it wasn't that great of game. It was kind of shitty, and I don't remember playing this one much. I went back and played SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 more than I played this game, for sure. Next up is whenever I got the PlayStation 3, it is WWE 12. So this year, graphic-wise, was a lot more advanced. Of course, THQ is still in control, but they were slowly going bankrupt, and you could tell because the servers were starting to be very crappy. The graphics, everything about the game wasn't the greatest, but going from PlayStation 2 to PlayStation 3, I had a lot of fun. This universe mode was very unique, more advanced than ever before, so I definitely loved playing this game. Next up is WWE 13. Again, THQ is still in control. But this year had basically, I think it was the first year for the showcase mode. It still had universe mode, but this is the first year for showcase mode, which was the WWE Attitude Era, which was always a great era. I always liked the Aggression Era more, which is the era that came after the Attitude Era, but this was still an amazing era. Having Mick Foley, Stone Cold, The Rock, and many more legends from back then be able to recreate everything that happened with storylines back then was a lot of fun. It is definitely one of my favorite WWE games. Next up is WWE 2K14. Now, this year here is the first year 2K took over, but everything about the game basically was created by THQ because they were just going bankrupt and 2K took over, so they were the ones that produced the game, but the game, everything, including the servers, were all THQ, which was a little bit weird. It was kind of messed up that year. It didn't have a lot going for it. It was the first year that the Hulkster was back in a video game, so a lot of people loved that and different aspects like that. They had the WrestleMania mode, which basically you went through. Instead of doing a showcase mode of a different era, they basically did a showcase mode of the top WrestleMania matches and moments and stuff like that. So it was a lot of fun. And no, this is not a special limited edition or anything like that because in the game, it was The Rock that was the cover. But if you flip the cover around, you had a different wrestler and mine was Daniel Bryan. So I thought I'll switch it around. And to me, that was a lot of fun having a unique cover and thinking that it was a unique. It's not rare or anything like that. But to me, it was pretty cool. Next up is WWE 2K15. This is also on the PS3. So this game here was a lot of fun. It was very unique. They had the NXT mode, which was very cool to do. Having all of the upcoming NXT superstars being in a video game for the first time. I know they had NXT people in previous games, but this is the first year that they were in the game without being DLC. So it was a lot of fun. Again, nothing really special with this game, but I remember playing the crap out of universe mode. Next up is WWE 2K16. I finally got the PS4 at this point. This year here, because Stone Cold's on the cover, yes, the career mode, or sorry, the showcase mode was all about Stone Cold, which was a lot of fun. Still had a lot to do with the Attitude Era, which two years before they did an Attitude Era mode. So in my opinion, it was like they're reproducing part of it, but it was everything to do with Stone Cold. It was a lot of fun. Definitely one of my favorite video games for sure that I remember playing. Next up is WWE 2K17. Again, had a lot of fun with this mode, but basically it was just universe mode. I did play online with all my friends, which was always fun. But this year I mainly played a lot of universe mode. This year is also the return of career mode because in the previous year they didn't have it in it and this year they returned it. So it was a lot of fun to be able to go through. Now it was a little bit repetitive. I will say that's going to have to do basically the same thing, play a match, do a promo, play a match, do a promo all the time. Got boring pretty quick, but this game was a lot of fun. The fact that they brought back career mode was amazing and it was a great touch. Next up is WWE 2K18. Now this is the one that came out last year. It was a lot of fun for me. Career mode, they did advance it, but eventually it became again repetitive. Play a match, do a rivalry, do a promo, and basically do stuff like that. So not a lot was unique with it. After you get called up from NXT, you basically go through a year, which is what I call the tutorial. And once you finish that, it's basically the repetitive kicks in. So it's just match, 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 doing your own thing, choosing who you fight for the championships. It was really boring in my opinion, but the universe mode was amazing. This game was still a lot of fun. The career mode was a little bit more advanced than the year before. So I definitely loved playing this game. And last up, the final one for my past 15 years of collecting the video games is 
WWE 2K19. So this one here I got in the deluxe version because for Black Friday, the regular version was down to $39.99 and this version here was $59.99. So for $20 more and you get all the DLC, everything from season pass, the 80s, uh, the superstars from the 80s and the pre-order stuff, which in my opinion, in total would have cost me at least 60 or $70 to get that stuff on its own. It was worth $20 just to get it all in the deluxe version. I got it straight from 2K. They sent it basically straight to me. This game's a lot of fun. I've been playing the crap out of universe mode, the updated money in the bank stuff, the updated matches, the updated roster, everything about it is a lot of fun. I'm obsessed with this game. I definitely recommend it. So this is my WWE collection. I hope you guys did enjoy. I definitely love the WWE as you guys can tell. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. So I'm going to leave this video here. Hope you guys did enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next video. Please take care. Peace.